Imagine this. It's the beginning of a storm chase. There's a lot of storms going up everywhere. You have no idea which storm to pick. What do you do, right? What do you do? Which one do you pick? Well, today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how I at least pick storms and we're going to do all that right after this. One of the things that I think trips a lot of newer people up when it comes to things like storm chasing or storm spotting is that beginning stage of a storm chase where there's a lot of storms going up. They're all in this area, your target area, and you don't know which one to pick. And that is perfectly understandable because this is the piece of the chase that can make or break it because you pick wrong, but the whole day might be done, but not if you pick right. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how you can use visual cues, radar cues, satellite cues. We're going to talk about the things I look for at the beginning of a day to, well, discern between different storms. So to start this off, we're going to assume not that you're trying to pick between two different target areas. You're in the right spot today. You're just trying to pick between storm A and storm B, not target A and target B. You're, you're there. There's just two storms going up. What do you do? How do you figure it out? Well, first place we want to stop, let's just start with the visual cues. Now, the first thing I'm looking at whenever I'm looking at a storm uh, and it's developing, everything looks great. There's a couple of things to look for. First off is the width of the towers. Is there one that is much larger than the other one? Then updrafts don't like to last too long and they're definitely not gonna become dominant, especially if the one right beside it is gigantic, okay? First thing, we're just looking for the size of those towers. The anvil, is it wispy or is it very crisp? Two towers right next to each other. One could be like razor sharp at the edge, one could be like a nice gradient. If you do not know uh, what that looks like, this is a great diagram of both of those possibilities, but you're looking for the one with those razor sharp, crisp edges. If you have that, you know that uh, these two things already, you don't even need radar and satellite for this. You have this wider tower with crisp uh, anvil edges that's the storm to look for, okay? You know that already, you're there. But say you're just a little bit further away and you can't really see both storms clearly. Well, now you gotta rely on radar and satellite. Now you're probably saying, you always say chase visually, don't, don't just rely on radar and satellite. And it's true, you should chase visually. But there are times when it's hard to see the other storm for a lot of reasons. Maybe you're south and east of all these storms and you can't see the north storm in all the details, right? Or maybe that uh, edge of the anvil is actually combined with ours, so you don't really know. There's a couple ways to actually look for cues here. Now, the first thing you wanna look at on radar, let's start with radar, there's a couple of things. First off, is this storm taking on a supercellular shape? Say that too fast. I mean, I can't, but uh, is it taking on that rounded bean shape? If it is, guess what? This storm is probably rotating. If the other one is not, then okay, that's easy, right? But in the real world, that's not how this works, right? That's not how this is going to work. You're going to see two storms that are looking like supercells and you got to decide which one of these am I picking? Well, it can be very confusing. But also when you take that into account with this other thing, Look for echo tops. Echo tops are super important when it comes to which storm am I picking? Because the storm that goes from zero to massive echo tops quickly, when that is quicker than all the other storms around it, that's the dominant cell. Pick that one. Now, now satellite, right? We're, we're talking about satellite now. There, there's, it's really, it's a little easier, uh, but you have to use it in combination with other things, I think. Uh, that anvil spread. When you're looking at a satellite image, we have a satellite course cards popping up right now, but when you have a satellite image and you see two storms about 30 miles apart, there's blue sky in between them, and you can't see both storms very clearly because you're far enough east, that anvil spread's gonna let you know which one of these storms is like more dominant, more powerful, because that storm with the bigger anvil spread has a bigger tower, it's more powerful, it's spreading that anvil and more in more of a wide direction. Those are all signs that this storm is stronger. So let's put all this together. Now, th there's a couple of things to keep in mind too. You need to consider the background environment of your day. 
as well. I just said you're not picking between point A and point P, but even within your target area, within four counties, which is all like reachable for a couple of different storms, there, there's enough variability in that little area that you need to be have a very fine tooth comb. Once you decide generally which area looks better, you also need to really get granular. Look at those surface ops, look at satellites, see uh, presence of boundaries, all those things. Those are all things that can help you also decide. Also, you need to decide how is this environment going to be acting later? If, you, if it's gonna be a crowded day, which storm is more likely to stay isolated longer? This is another day that's going to produce tornadoes instantly, but toward evening, you wanna to target toward evening anyway. So the initial storms may not be the storms you wanna be on because they might be too crowded by evening. You might wanna target and be really patient and really give yourself heartburn by being away from that initial convective initiation. Now, when you put all this together though, you're looking for that storm that quite honestly is bigger. It's qu quicker to intensify. It's got bigger echo tops, larger anvil spread, all those things. That's the storm you want to target initially. At least that's how I do it. Uh, this paid off on May 23rd this last year with the El Dorado tornado because there were two tornadic supercells stacked up right there next to each other. But on radar, the north one was smaller. Uh, visually, it looked smaller. Uh, it had a nice tilt to it for sure, but everything said, stay south. All these cues, they were stay south, stay on this southern storm, and we did, and this was the result, right? Incredible chase day, and it was because all these initial cues were read at the beginning of the day. And we also kept in mind the overall environment. It was just a hair better south than it was north. And all those things led us to the right spot. So you may be wondering, okay, that's great. I know how to pick the initial storm, but how do I get to the right area? Or, or what, what happens then? Well, this playlist that's popping up right now, Storm Spotting Basics, is going to lead you to the promised land. I promise you. Anyways, remember, 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 remember to subscribe. Remember, weather is for everybody. That does include you. And we will see you next time.